Yo, what's up, guys? Teacher Paul over here, and today we are reacting to Sweden Geography Now. So this is part two. If you haven't seen part one, you can click on the card. Go ahead and watch that. So part two, we were just going to talk about... Another interesting thing about Sweden is its wildlife. And with that, here's Gary Harlow to explain. Wildlife. That's what we're, we were going to talk about. Wildlife. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah. Let's learn about Sweden. Let's go. Guess who's back? As a Nordic country, Sweden is obviously a place full of cold climate animals. In fact, they have the third highest number of their national animal, the moose, or the Eurasian elk, after Russia and Canada. There's so many moose that they actually have to hunt around 100,000 every year to maintain wow. population control. Killing your national animal because there's too many? Go Sweden! There are 30 national parks and nature protection zones, and the most famous being in the North Lapland areas where reindeer, muxox, grey owls, and brown bears can be spotted roaming freely. Fun fact, Reindeer have climate adapted feet in the summer. Their spongy foot pads are more exposed, which help with traction. But in winter, the pads shrink and the hoof is exposed, which helps cut into the ice when moving. Finally, wow. Sweden is one of the few places in the world with a real taxidermized whale. The mouth used to be open for visitors to walk into, but it was closed off to the public because a couple was caught having sex in it. Speaking of what? making babies, I made Come one on. myself. Here's a photo of my daughter. She's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, I remember the first meal I had in Sweden was reindeer meatballs. You guys love your reindeer. What's your favorite dishes in Sweden? It probably is reindeer meatballs. <laughs> yeah. I would say salmon. Grilled in the summer, oven baked in the winter. Oh yeah, and you guys know fika, right? Yeah, fika. It's funny because coffee was actually banned from Sweden like five times in the 1700s, but that's wow. another story. To explain a little bit more about fika and the food, here's Johan and Rikard. All right, guys, well, this is uh, fika. And to explain, here is Johan. So in Sweden, fika is a huge tradition. Is that it's like afternoon tea? It's a part of a workday break where you kind of like gather, you sit down, and you yeah, have I love coffee. the dog. Historically, it's been that seven types of cookies minimum, plus cinnamon rolls and cardamom rolls, and um, then pastries such as princess cakes and other things. This reminds me of the afternoon tea here in London. They have something very similar. Every day, but not necessarily this many sorts. I wanted to give you a cross section of what it could be. So, and then the most famous on the bottom would be the princess cake. So, if I'm going to try some, I have to have some marzipan. So many layers. <laughs> no. Wow. And Hello there. My name is Dick, and I'm here to talk about some of the foods. We have kroppkakor or palt, depending on if you are from the north or the south. Sill, or as you will call it, herring. We have reindeer, pea soup, cauliflower soup, surströmming, or sour herring, but eat at your own risk. All of these foods can be eaten at the traditional smörgåsbord, or smör smörgåsbord, basically a Swedish buffet. We also have kallis, or charles, caviar. It's a Swedish style caviar. of smoked cod roe, not that super expensive. And of course we have knäckebröd! And the traditional national dish of Sweden, Swedish tacos. Over to really? some drinks from Sweden. We have aquavit or flavored caraway liquor. Julmus and Christmas and Poskmus and no. Easter. Uh, glögg. We have glögg. And of course, my personal favorite, punch. It's made by the mixing of spirits like Arak brandy or rum with Arak tea with some sugar and water. Very sweet, very strong and very nice. Thank you, Johan and Rikard. Oh yeah, you guys also have something about like the alcohol in Sweden. Can you guys explain what is that? Mm, it's called the Systembolaget, which is like the Swedish system of selling heavily regulated alcohol at state-owned stores at set prices. So you, have, you can be 18 and go to a bar to get liquor, but you can't buy it at a store no. until you're 20. Correct. Logic. You know? Logic, yeah. <laughs> the way it goes is that Norwegian people go to Sweden to buy alcohol, Swedish people go to Denmark to buy alcohol, and Danish people go to Germany to buy alcohol. What? You guys all have a system. Yeah, Logic we have a system family. for cheap alcohol. So this is probably a bunch of 16 year olds taking a ferry over to Denmark. The ferry itself is a party. Yeah. I've been on that ferry. <laughs> I've been on that ferry with my mom between Helsingborg and Helsingor. Oh, and a funny story, I was told uh, when potatoes were introduced to Sweden, it was kind of like this. What are these things? Well, obviously, liquor. And that's how Aquavit was born, what? supposedly. Oh, what's that thing about candy on Saturdays? Explain, Katarina. Uh, you get to eat candy on Saturdays. So when we were kids, we got a little amount of money. We got to run to the store and pick our favorite 
candy. It's amazing. Best in the world. I mean, yes, good ingredients. When you come here, pretty much half the ingredients of American candy is illegal in Sweden. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we do that. Well, on that note, we've talked a lot about some of your small little Lots traditions. and lots Let's of sugar as well. In... I asked Geography P. Johan to explain... Let me just talk about that. Candy. I like candy that is not too sweet. I don't know why. I like sour candy as well. Um, and it's funny because in, in the West side of the world, candy, um, drinks, and, you know, soft drinks, they're all full of sugar. And here in the UK, there is a strong sugar control, let's say. Um, they even, they tax, there's a, a sugar tax. And I find that really, really nice because it helps people, you know, stay healthy. But, you know, it is what it is. The USA is so, <laughs> I don't know, liberal with these things. And Swedish people and what they're like. And he described it something like this. A Swedish person is pretty reserved. They will definitely help you, but probably won't take the immediate initiative to help you. The way I see it, it's kind of like, oh no, I hope I don't fall. Oh, I'm falling. <laughs> oh, and I dropped my wallet and I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. Can help me or? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Was I supposed to help you? Yeah. yeah oh yeah, my yeah, God. Yeah. 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 Here's... Also, what are some other kind of taboos in Swedish culture? What do you think? I guess uh, when you get on the bus, if there is another available seat and you go sit next to someone, don't do that. Yeah. Just don't. And don't have too much eye contact in general. Preferably none. Explain <laughs> what is uh, logo manjanta law. It's a law that basically tells you that don't think you're better than anyone. It's like don't tell people that you got good grades. Just get them and move on. But you know, kind of let it, them see it on Yeah, it's, it's definitely based on status. <laughs> Logum is this word that does not exist in English. Is it a it real law though? Not too much. Or not an too unwritten little, law. Just the perfect amount. I would Lagom. say that a Swedish person is generally intelligent. Is that <laughs> full of myself saying that? Nah, it's just a result of uh, our educational system. <laughs> That's right. But part of your culture, uh, Yantalon, you're not allowed to do that, right? Well, we're not allowed to brag. <laughs> no, but now we're in America, so. Uh, <laughs> well, that was a discussion. Any. That's the thing. We talked about this in another um, video, and it's not that it's a law or it's not that you're not allowed to. It's just an unwritten rule, you know. I don't know, but you guys can tell me. Case, let's break down the population of Sweden. Sweden has a population of about 10.25 million and has one of the oldest populations in the world at about 41 years of age on average. About 75% of the country claims to be ethnically Swedish, and this is where things get a little complicated. For the remaining 25%, the Swedish government doesn't have any official statistical data on foreign background, but what we do know is that of these people, about 2 million of them were born abroad, and about 600,000 were born in Sweden as second generation with foreign parents. We also okay. know that as of 2020, due to the refugee crisis, the largest immigrant communities had origins mostly from Syria and Iraq, which surpassed Finland and Poland in the 21st century for the largest foreign-born communities. Yeah, we'll talk about the refugee thing later, but in the meantime... Sweden uses the Swedish krona as its currency. And we use the type C and F plug outlets, and we drive on the right side of the road. But we used to drive on the left side until September 3rd, 1967. When the Höge Trafiksomläggningen was instituted. And it was a crazy time. People were all confused and jamming into each other. In Sweden... Oh, I mean, I can imagine. Shocker! Swedish! But the funny thing is, even though Swedish originated and has pretty much always been spoken, natively in Sweden, Swedish actually only became official in the country in 2009. Yeah. Yeah, they wow. kept kind of arguing about it. It was like... No, it might be seen as more difficult for international issues. It might be seen as discriminatory, maybe, for those who don't speak Swedish. God! So let's break this down. The country <laughs> is called Sweden. What the f*** do you think people should speak in Sweden? And that's how Swedish became the official language of Sweden. We've explained this before, but the three Scandinavian countries Makes can all sense. more or less understand each other. If you learn one, you can pretty much kind of communicate with the others. It's just, you know, when they hear Danish, it's like, Oh, hey, Denmark. <laughs> interesting. And the interesting thing <laughs> is that the Swedish language has... They're having fun with the Here's potato. Here's Marcus to explain a little bit more. So, yeah, Swedish is a very hard language to learn. We also have uh, pitch dialect, some words look and are uh, pronounced exactly the same but have different meanings so the word plan uh, it can mean a plan like having a great plan it can also mean a uh, pitch like a football pitch football's plan banan 
uh, which means banana, but if you pronounce it banan, it means the track. Thank you, Marcus. In any case, okay. on top of that, there are also five... I mean, the same thing happens with English, like present and present, you know, like assess. <laughs> um, you know, other words like desert or dessert, it depends on how you stress or where you stress. In English, we have that, you know, stress point. So you can change the the word just by changing the stress point of the the word protected languages in sweden finnish menkal sami romani and yiddish also sweden has a lot of regional accents if she spoke her native language right now or <laughs> you don't native, even say dialect you say language <laughs> native dialect i wouldn't understand a word say the most difficult uh southern swedish thing you can say okay this is not my accent okay disclaimer <laughs> det är nämnt men traurigt och kärrullebar it is easy but difficult to drive a roller coaster. Wheelbarrow, but that was really good. Right? Yeah. All right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. You thought wheelbarrow was roller coaster. <laughs> Whoa! In any case, Christianity was introduced in the 9th century. Today, most Swedes, regardless of their level of religious devotion or lack thereof, are at least registered with the Swedish Lutheran Church. And like the Danes and Norwegians, they have their confirmation Maybe ceremonies just at age 14 or 15. In old times, ancient Swedes and the Norse people followed the Asatru religion. You know, word. Okay, so I know that um, I think the Catholic Church um, registers people and that is very useful because if you want to find your ancestors, you can just go there and look at the, the registers. Maybe that's what's happening here with the Lutheran Church. Tor, Odin, Loki, all of them were from. Otherwise, Sweden is a constitutional monarchy. Although they are mostly seen as just figurehead celebrities with almost no actual legislative power. And today, the royal family is actually French descended. For what it's worth, being the largest of the Scandinavian countries, Sweden has a lot on its plate. In general, most people would say that the system works. Yes, we do have one of the highest life expectancies in the world at over 82 years. People get paid to go to schools they are accepted in. Healthcare is free for people under 18. Dental is free for anyone under 20. Otherwise, there are price caps for medical and pharmaceutical services, and they are usually cheap. However, for the population, there is a bit of a shortage in medical facilities, and like most state subsidized healthcare systems, wait times can be an issue sometimes, and they follow the 0 30 90 90 rule. This rule states that a person cannot wait more than 90 days to see a specialist and 90 days after diagnosis to receive surgery unless it is deemed an emergency. This means that the worst case scenario, potentially, it could take almost half a year to get treated. This is wow. one reason why one out of 10 Swedes actually prefer private insurance, which was, you know, made available in 2010 rather than relying on universal healthcare system. Otherwise, we aren't going to fully sugarcoat this episode. Everyone knows that Sweden has seen quite a few drastic changes in the past decade or so. During the 2014-15 refugee crisis, Sweden saw a wave of asylum seekers, mostly from Syria and Iraq. Obviously, this unexpected influx in such a short time, you know, barely allowing the new immigrants time to integrate, kind of played out in many ways that you know, made international news. Now, this is where the narrative kind of steps on thin ice because you want to be seen as compassionate, but you also can't avoid the fact that statistically problems that quiet Sweden had never really seen before obviously kind of started to arise. We've seen yeah. the news features, riots, multiple cities, crime rising, but at the same time, you also want to be seen as compassionate, but without sidestepping the issues. So the question was, how? Well, it's not an easy question to answer. So I don't know, what do you guys think of that whole situation of the drama? You can see it as either win-win or lose-lose in many ways, because if you're completely against taking in immigrants, you're basically considered a racist. And uh, if you're trying to turn a blind eye to the fact that, you know, crime has risen, a lot the last years, then that's not great either. So I think this is a fairly new problem and, and it takes some time to really figure it out. It's difficult. And it's kind difficult. of, yeah, kind of a discussion of how to help people, you know, integrate into the society in general. Mm -hmm. Swedish and society. I think integration is keyword. You know, half the people are going to argue for all the benefits of opening our country up and helping people. And those are huge as well. Yeah. See, this is kind of part of the complication of Sweden. There's always like a dichotomy of ethics and consequences within their story. For yeah. example, they've been neutral or at least on paper for 200 years. Yet that neutrality has always kind of been tested throughout the time. In 
in World War I, our choice not to intervene pretty much costed us the chance to integrate the Åland Islands. And in World War II, Sweden took like almost all of Denmark's Jewish refugees. However, they did trade with Nazi Germany and let them use the railroad. But it's like, what other choice did they have when they just witnessed and saw Denmark getting demolished and attacked and occupied in like six hours? It's like, do you stay wow. neutral yet technically cooperate or fight back with no chance and lose everything? So many heavy choices with no simple answers. Well, that was fantastic and uplifting. In any case, <laughs> we must move on. One thing Sweden does. Yeah, I mean, here are my thoughts. I mean, it's it's not an easy, um, there's not an easy, easy answer. But when you do accept um, immigrants, you need to make sure that you have jobs available, um, education, and you need to treat them as equal as possible so that they can have a chance a fighting chance in society but when you're getting so many people at the same time and at let's say an older age it does it does complicate things i mean i don't know there is no easy answer to that but hey let's keep going definitely does actually feel uplifted by would be their heavy, are heavy, involvement in sports. And with that, uh, Art usually fills in for the sports part, but uh, again, he's still on vacation with his family, so I don't know. Uh, Noah, why don't you fill in? All right, Noah, oh, you, gotta, you okay. gotta be Art okay. this time. He's gone, so, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, you missed the do, and you go too. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Sorry, but sports in Sweden. Fun fact, they actually won a half medal at the 1900 Olympics, technically. They teamed up with Denmark in the tug-of-war event. Yes, there actually used to be a tug-of-war event in the Olympics, which does really? sound pretty cool. Why would why would you get rid of that? I go to the Olympics to do tug-of-war. That'd be pretty awesome. You could just be your own team, t Noah. <laughs> there are two sports that kind of originated in Sweden, brandball and floorball. Brandball is kind of like baseball, and floorball is basically like hockey with a ball on the floor. So the thing about Sweden is okay. that each of their neighbors is kind of like their biggest rivals in a certain sport. And of course, we can't mention <laughs> football without mentioning their biggest player, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But depending on who you ask, it's many people time. might say that ice hockey is a national sport. In 2006, they became the first and so far only team to win both tournaments in the same calendar year, Olympics and World Championships. They're part of the big six that are considered the best ice hockey teams in the world, including wow. Canada, Czechia, Finland, Russia, and the United States. Uh, that's the sports parts. Thank you, Noah. So much culture in Sweden. Actually, if you want to learn more about it, just read uh, The Adventures of Niels. He rides a goose around Sweden and learns some life lessons along the way or something. With that, here's Random Hannah with culture stuff. Hey guys, I'm back. Woo! In Sweden, you'll find that every region has its unique identity. For example, the Sami people of Lapland in the north, they have their reindeer herding, tents, and colt or yakti clothing. If you go to the south in Skona, though, you'll find a radically different culture of glass blowing and silversmithing, stuff like that. Of course, we don't have time to dive into all the regions, but one thing you'll realize is that they all have a traditional costume or folkdrichter. One thing okay. you will see all over Sweden is a typical redwood farmhouse. They also have the Dalahes a wooden horse usually painted red with patterns. And speaking of iconic animals, Swedes actually like love Donald Duck even more than Mickey Mouse. And every year really? during Christmas, they show Donald Duck and his friends wish you a Merry Christmas on the TV. Sweden every also year? has many notable individuals in the arts and literature department. And probably the most critically well-known is Anders Zorn, who is commissioned to paint numerous high-profile figures. Swedes are known for their crime, fiction, drama, and literature. They love the complex, Noir. moody scenarios. Many people attribute this guy, I'm not even going to try and say his name, as the <laughs> founder of modern Scandinavian crime fiction. But the number one best-selling Swedish author of all time is actually Astrid Lindgren. You've probably heard of her Pippi Longstocking series. And speaking of consumable media, if you want to learn about culture, history, and geography through film, check out Filmography Now, where we talk about people like Ingmar Berman, who is a huge influential person in the film industry, and he was from Sweden. Finally, Sweden is known for having a ton of inventions and discoveries, such as nicotine gum, the pacemaker, wow. the three-point seatbelt, wow. GPS, the ultrasound, dynamite, and the Celsius temperature scale. And wow. four elements on the periodic table were named after the town... Bitterby. Aetherberg. <laughs> I give up, guys. Too many strange vowels and sounds. And one thing you should give up on is Keith and his music segment. Take it away, Keith. <laughs> Wow, so we're finally talking about this country that I have like totally not any sort of bias towards. Oh wait, hold on, I think I'm forgetting something. Whee! 
I hope everybody recognizes sure. my favorite Swedish band right here. Let's talk about Sweden, shall we? Technically, Sweden doesn't have a national anthem. So they have this one song. They don't? called Du Gama Du Fria. I guess it's the de facto anthem, but not the official one. There's tons of really great Swedish folk songs accompanied by the Swedish nickel harp. Kind of looks like a keyboard mixed with like a violin. Who likes Strandberg guitars? I do. Just so many great guitar players. Per Nelson, greatest guitar player, I think, out of Sweden. Um, there's also Ingve Malmsteen, Ola Ogland, Michael Ackerfeld. I don't understand why Scandinavia has produced some of the world's greatest guitar players. Anyways, Sweden has also a very pop-centric side. Yes. Who doesn't know ABBA? ABBA. I want to be a dancing queen. ABBA won in 1974 for the Eurovision contest. Also, now ABBA's actually going to be making a new album after yes, 40 years. Yes, I reacted to it. Nothing. Since then, Sweden has been kind of the pioneers of like electro pop and dance music. More well-known artists might be like Avicii, the Carnigans, Swedish House Mafia, Roxette. Funny thing is, as a lot of American pop songs were written by Swedes. Max Martin has hundreds oh, of yeah. songs before I go, some of the bands that I really do enjoy are Opeth, Meshuga, Pain. I've mentioned this before. I watched a documentary which talked about Max Martin, and he did a very good thing for the USA and the world. In a Salvation, Sabaton, uh, there's Sabaton. Beardfish. I wish I could name them all. Anyways, you guys have a great one. Love y'all. Thank you, Keith. Any music uh, suggestions for Swedish music? Robin. She has a, she's a great musician. Benjamin Robin, Ingrosso I've heard her. It. Well, uh, oh, and, uh, speaking of which, Carolina is a musician and uh, an artist, and uh, you can follow her Spotify at this link right here. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will promote it. I will promote your Spotify. This, don't be all Logum or Yantalo and whatever that is on me. You got to promote yourself. This is America. So far, released three <laughs> Swedish songs, one English one. You want to promote anything? You have a website? Anything? No. You were in a Norwegian movie and it got an Emmy Award. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Hey. Yeah, your music has touched the world in so many ways. And another way Sweden has made its name across the world is by interacting with it. So let's move on to the friend zone. Okay. Now Sweden has an interesting way of dealing with the rest of the world. They kind of have a hands-off unless really necessary approach to international conflict. For one, their security doctrine states that they have a non-partisan stance in regards to military alliances. However, it permits cooperation with threats against peace security with their military. Yes, Sweden has a military. Nonetheless, they joined the EU in 1995, which some criticized as being against neutrality, but Sweden decided to see it as an extension of economic activity that had already been going on with the EU. And they they also hold the right to not participate in EU defense. Today, they have 79 embassies abroad on all inhabited continents. In Asia, Iraq actually has had relations way before conflict years, dating back to the 30s when members of the royal family visited Baghdad to see King Ghazi of Iraq. In the 80s, Swedish companies opened up in Iraq, trade was developing well for a while, and after conflict years, many Iraqis chose Sweden as their destination as refugees. The USA and Canada have always been close, as the US has the largest Swedish diaspora community at over 4 million people. People, most heavily concentrated in Minnesota, Canada having just about half a million with a huge community in Manitoba. Between 1820 to 1930, about 1 1.3 million Swedes immigrated to the Americas, which was at that time about one third of the entire country. And today, these nations not only had a close historical bond, but in almost every diplomatic measure aside from military conflict, they've cooperated. Bringing it closer to home, Sweden is actually one of the top donors of Moldova in regards to aid and development. They set okay. a strategy of cooperation in 2007, which gives 11 million million euros dedicated to good governance, economy, and rural development. Now we go even closer to the inner circle, the Nordics. Every single one of these five nations and their territories has an opinion about Sweden, and the gossip is heavy. Finland is, of course, really close, as for about 600 years, they were actually a part of Sweden. And today, Finns are one of the largest non-Swedish communities with a protected language and pockets throughout the country. For Iceland, it's like, eh, we're cool with them, nothing against them. They talk like our ancient Norse ancestors, but otherwise, they're totally our distant cousins. Then we get to the last two, Denmark and Norway. Now here's the thing, each one kind of has a small historical gripe with Sweden. Denmark, as you know, has had more wars with Sweden than any two nations on Earth, constantly fighting over influence for Northern Europe. Wow. Norway was kind of pissed that Sweden's neutrality prevented them from intervening in war times when they thought the Swedish were like really close and Norway was even part of Sweden. This was especially evident in World War II. It was like the moment of tension. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, 
you cannot separate the Scandinavian trio. They just get each other too well. They share too much, they have the same general Scandinavian minds, they have that Viking blood, they are truly people of the North. After the insults have been hurled, they will probably say, okay, yeah, yeah, we love each other. Denmark and Sweden, though, will probably first hug Norway before hugging each other, but otherwise, yeah, inseparable trio. All right, and in conclusion, you are the Swedes. I'm gonna step out, hold the flag in the background while you speak freely from the heart. I want to say, in conclusion, Sweden is a beautiful country with beautiful nature, beautiful architecture, if we haven't mentioned that just yet. Yeah, and like we mentioned, if you meet a Swedish person, he or she might be a little reprehend, like a little bit, hmm, I'm not sure about you, but lead on with a smile and some love, and you'll get the exact same back, I promise you. I like that. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for being in this episode. Thank you. And stay tuned. Switzerland is Woo! coming up next. Switzerland is next. Ah, oh, that was a nice episode. Guys, I hope you enjoyed um, Sweden's episode. We have done so many Swedish videos here and we learned a lot about Sweden. Now I need to go visit and, you know, make some videos about Sweden. Would you guys like to watch um, my reaction to Switzerland? If you, if you would, let me know in the comments down below. This video was a bit long. Um, we did it in two parts, so you can check out part one as well. If you haven't yet. Technically, you you had to watch part one and then part two, um, but basically, it's a very. I thought this episode had a lot of more people, and I think um, throughout the years, geography now has become a little bit more professional in every single aspect. Um, as you can see, they have different people. A lot of people, a lot of involvement with the community, and yeah, it's a really nice uh, little program. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and subscribe to their YouTube channel, the link is in the description to the original video, as always. And yeah, subscribe to my channel as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I said subscribe three times, didn't I? And let me know in the comments what you want me to react to next. I'll see you. Take care now. Bye-bye. Wrong button, sorry.